Good morning, Edisto Fort. Let us stand. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is your house. Father, come and dwell. This is your house. Holy house of prayer. With the lost and the lonely. Bring their burdens and their cares. This is your house. Father come. Come and dwell. This is your house. Father come. Father come and dwell. House of prayer. A holy house of prayer. Where the Lord, where the Lord, and the Lord bring their burden, bring their burden and their care. This is, this is your house, your house. This is your house. Lord, come and dwell. Amen. We will now have our Advent litany. endured these past few years and know that there is more to face before us. We don't know if we have the strength to withstand what might be around the next corner and we will wonder who will stand with us, who will be, who will have our back, who will occupy our corner. Who is with us? That is what we began to wonder these days. Who will light our way and chart our course? Who is on our side? Who will welcome us home again? Home. The prophet Jeremiah speaks of a branch that will be rise, raised. Jesus spoke of a son of man that will descend, both point to a hope a hope that calls us home, our true home, where we welcomed and loved and included, where there is justice, equality, and peace. It's time, this Advent season, time to go home. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our strong hope, that there is a way to go home, to the home in Christ, and it starts with us, and it starts here. It starts now. It's time to go home. Amen. Let us join together by singing our hymn, Emmanuel.
Emmanuel. Amen. While you're still standing, let us join together by reaffirming our faith, by reciting our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the Let's give 
on one occasion it is more blessed to give than to receive since given it shall be given back to you a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over for the measure you give will be the measure you receive because God loves what cheerful giver let us stand as we render unto God that which belongs to God Bless thou the gifts our hands have brought. Bless thou the work our hearts have planned. Cause it's the thing, the will, the thought. The rest of all is in thy hand. You may be seated.
Lord, we thank you because you keep on blessing us better than we deserve every day you send new mercies our way every day you look beyond our faults and Lord you keep on meeting our needs and for that Lord we want to say thank you Thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to come to your place of worship. Thank you, God, for health and strength and a mind that's still working. We give you honor, glory. We give you all the praise. Now, God, speak a word to us word that only you can take me away from me now is your time as I decrease you increase oh my father send your preacher in other words in other words shine on me shine on me Lord, let your light from your lighthouse shine on me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Those of you who have your Bibles, I want to invite your attention to Luke's Gospel, 15th chapter, or the 21st chapter, that is, verses 30. 4 through 35. That should be Luke 21, 34 through 35. And it says, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. I want to tag this text with the topic, Avoid the Trap. Avoid the Trap. This is the first Sunday of Advent. It is here as we wait with expectation of the coming King, as we wait with expectation for the coming Messiah. Historically, church Advent was very similar to the Lenten season. It was a time of fasting, prayer, and inner reflection in preparation for the observance of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. However, over the years, Advent has evolved into a season of self-absorbed celebration. It has become a season of overindulgence, where the emphasis is on the material and not the spiritual. Where the emphasis is on the sale and not the savior. The focus has shifted from praying to shopping, from devotion to decoration, from fasting to feasting. Here we are in the midst of an Advent season 
And it appears that we have failed to do what is most important, and that is observe or watching for Jesus' arrival. We've become so involved in the trivial trappings that we are viewed as commercialized Christians, where we have failed to contemplate the big picture, which is what does it mean for the Son of God uh, to enter into the world? Did you hear me? What does it mean to you in this year for Jesus to come into the world? Have you given it any thought that this might be the year the Lord returns? Do you believe Jesus is coming back like he said he would? Are you prepared or have you allowed yourself to be caught up and distracted from what is most important? Church Advent can either be a blur of religious activities or a pause for restoration. We can either busy ourselves with self-indulgence or devote ourselves to grow in a deeper understanding of what it means to have the promise of the Messiah fulfilled through the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember these words, Christ has come, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. To sum it all up, Advent is heart check time. It's a time to really see what we treasure, what we cherish. A time to see where is our devotion. In this text, we see Luke begins with verse 34 with these opening words. He says, be your own God so that your hearts are not weighed down. Hmm. You see, Jesus warns his disciples again about matters that concern the heart because he knows that whatever has your heart has you. Whatever has your heart has you. And the question is, what has your heart? Is it the Black Friday sales? What has your heart? The things that you have accumulated? What has your heart? Is it a man or a woman? What has your heart? In Matthew 6 and 21, Jesus informed his disciples, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Which indicates to us, whatever we treasure, our hearts will follow it. Jesus had a concern about guarding your heart, because where your heart leads you, you're going to follow. Amen. There's a story told by Helen Hayes of how a leading lady of the theater, how years ago they were riding on the train the Santa Fe chief. And as they were crossing the continent on that train, this beautiful woman who she knew just a little bit 
this woman was in the final stage of tuberculosis and she was going back to her home in England to die. She had been a successful performer of the theater and the usual string of admirers had a mass that, that she had and she had amassed a lovely collection of jewelry. And while they were riding on the train, the story is told how she sent word to Helen Hayes to come to her compartment. And as Helen Hayes went to visit with her, the woman could not talk because her tuberculosis were at its final stage. But it was not a conversation she wanted with Helen Hayes. Very soon, this woman indicated by nodding to her maid that she was ready for what was probably a daily ritual. The maid reached and got a large leather jewelry case and placed it beside her mattress. She unlocked it and opened it. And the story is told that for an hour and a half, Helen Hayes was required to take each piece of jewelry from the case, hold it up to the light, turn it around, and that woman who was lying on her deathbed would look at the jury and then she would look at Helen Hayes' face to see her reaction. And Helen Hayes said that through this ritual inside she was crying because to this woman all that life had given her and all that she had to hold on to was this box of hard, bright objects. Yeah. And Helen Hayes says, when the lights were out, in the dark, when one needs comfort, this woman couldn't see her treasure. This woman, like so many of God's children, Falling into the trap because her heart was weighed down with treasures that she couldn't see. Lord have mercy. That, she, that treasures that could do her no good in her darkest hour. And how many of you know all that stuff you holding on to? That when you are on a bed of affliction. That when it looks like it's your time to get up out of here, those things can't do you no good. It's a trap. It's a trap. We should never allow the exterior things to shape our hearts. The interior lives of the faithful ought to be shaped with the love for higher things, which is in Christ Jesus. You see, when you allow your heart to get weighed down, it guarantees that you will be the recipient of a heart weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and worry. In other words, you'll get caught up in the rat race of life, seeking fulfillment from stuff, judging your sense of self by your possessions, and you become entrapped and overwhelmed by the things you desire and the stuff that you have obtained over the years. And you end up in a place called worry. When you are so tied to the things of this world, 
you end up in a place called worrying. You worry about what you don't have. You worry about keeping the stuff that you do have. And you worry about what other people think about you. But I'm here to let you know in this season of Advent, it's a trap. It's a trap where you become weighed down with a heavy heart. Some of y'all already worrying about what you can get and what you can give for Christmas. Already thinking about possessional things and not thinking about how close are you in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord, listen at how Eugene Peterson in the Message Bible puts it. He says, be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dull by parties and drinking and shopping. Otherwise, the day is going to take you by complete surprise. Spring on you suddenly like a trap. In other words, don't allow yourself to get dull. You aren't good for much when you're dull. And see, when you don't guard your heart, you can easily get dull. This pandemic has made so many of God's children dull. You're stuck in a routine, in a staying in a house, pretending that you're quarantining. You're quarantining from church, but you go every place else. Duh. You have allowed yourself to be distant from the relationship that you claim you have with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you get dull, it takes away the best that God has given you to give. When you get dull, you see dull Christians, they don't smile, they don't have a positive word, always negative. Duh. Looking down instead of up. Duh. Never thinking about possibilities and when the, 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 the opportunity comes to trust God to do exceedingly abundantly, they stand and say, we can't do that. Duh. How many of you know God is still a miracle worker? God is still a way maker. And you ought not allow anything in this world to stand between you and your expectation that with God uh, all things are possible. You see, in this day and time, folk are looking not for a dull word, but they're looking for a word with great expectation. They want to hear the good news affirm. And the good news is that all things work together for good uh, for those who love the Lord, when your heart is tied uh, to the Lord, Lord have mercy. 
That's when you look at yourself as God sees you and you can declare, I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I'm the head and not the tail, on top and not on the bottom. Not to see yourself in that way is to fall in a trap. Lord have mercy. You see, folk are looking for the good news. The good news. How can Christ be born anew in my life? How can we draw closer with the Lord? I tell you how. You got to go on a God chase. You got to get behind God and chase after God on a daily basis. Every day you got to pray. And draw nearer to God. Uh, every day you got to get in his word. And get that word in you. To strengthen your faith. To believe that with God. All things are possible. You see when you get like that. Then the church. Then becomes a powerful place. Because folk want a church that's not moved by fashion, but a church that walks by faith. They want a church that is a house of prayer, where the members know how to pray for you, where they can lay hands on the sick and they recover. They want a vibrant church. Not a dull church where you come in here not dragging, but you come in here with your head up high declaring, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. They want a church where love abides unconditionally. Where I can find love when I'm down, where I can be picked up when I fall. Instead of wounding me, they want a place that will walk with me, a church that is governed by the Holy Spirit. They want to hear the words that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word comes from the mouth of God. Church, guard your heart so that your expectation, love of God and love of neighbor, will not be dulled by the things of this world. Advent is a time to set your priorities and make the main thing the main thing. Because believe it or not, Jesus is coming back. And the question is, will you be ready when he comes? Or will you be caught in the trap? Don't let your heart be weighed down. But let your heart be lifted up by looking to the hill. From where your help comes from. And how many of you know all of our help. Comes. From the Lord. You better get close to God. They talking about another variant. The Omicron variant. Of COVID-19 is about to strike. And folk have let their guard down and they want to run back to doing things like they used to do things. But those days are over. What you better do is keep your little hand in God's 
big hand uh, and walk with God on a daily basis uh, and declare that as long as I got King Jesus, that's what's most important for us as believers. And to love and show love like you did on last Monday and Tuesday. Giving those turkeys to 150 families. Giving those cooked meals to those families who could not cook for themselves. Showing love. Not to pat ourselves on the back, but because we know as God's people that there was a time when we stood in need. There was a time when we needed God to step in for us. And so we bless others. Because God's been a blessing to us. And Edisto folk, don't you ever forget how God's been good to you. And so, we in turn ought to bless others. Not to do so. Not to do so would mean we've fallen in a trap. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I don't possess houses or lands, fine clothes or jewelry. Sorrows and cares of this old world, my lot seems to be. But I have a Christ who paid the price way back on Calvary. Yes, Christ is all, all and all, this world to me. Where there are some folk who look and long for this world's riches there are some folk who look for power and position too but i have a christ who is my life and this makes me happy oh and he's all yes he's all this world to me yes Christ is all he's everything to me yes Christ is all he rules the land and sea yes Christ is all yes without him nothing could be Yes, Christ is all, all in all, this world to me. Yes, Christ is all, he's everything to me. Yes, Christ is all, he rules the land and sea. Yes, Christ is all, without him nothing could be. Yes, Christ is all, all in all, this world to me.
Christ is all. But even greater than that, I feel like we need to lift this up. Thank you, Lord. Anybody here thankful? Thank you, Lord. You didn't have to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 When you think about what could have been, what should have been. Thank you. Thank you. truly thankful. Yes, sir. I'm thankful because the Lord has truly been good to me. Amen. And I thank him this morning. Thank you Jesus. thanking him with your presence as you come into this worship place. Thank him because he's worthy. He's been so good. He brought you from a mighty long way. And Lord, we just said thank you. Thank you, Father, for being the good God that you are. Let us pray. Prayer time. Prayer time. Most holy, 
and everlasting thou art God. We come this morning in this season of Advent full of praise and thanksgiving. Thanking you, Father, for how you brought us. Thanking you for how you kept us. Knowing that we could not have made it if you was not on our side. Thank you, Lord, who sits high, looks low, and sees about his children. He's at my house. He's at your house. He's omnipotent, omnipresent. God, you're everywhere. And Father God, we thank you for the dangers and things that you have saved us from that we don't even know about. Thank you, Father. But Father, we thank you now. This season of Advent, expectation expecting thank you Lord your people are full of expectation this morning through this season for a mighty move from you Father God we come for a closer walk with you knowing that you are God and God alone and can't nobody Nobody do you like you do us, Father. Only you. And we come now. Some standing, some are sitting, some are prostrate. But Father, we come just as we are. Holding up holy hands. Praises on our lips. And joy in our hearts. For where you brought us from for how you kept us. Father God, some have been on their sick bed, but you came into their sick room, healed their bodies, and then made it on out to this old Bethel spot. Say, thank you, Lord. Some have run into unemployment difficulties through no fault of their own. But Father, you keep on making a way. Thank you. Father God, we still need this COVID-19 in the midst of this pandemic. We've lost loved ones. We've lost friends. But Father God, leading and dependent on you. Because you are good. And you know what's best. And Father God, we'd like to give us the strength to follow the direction that we're living in in this pandemic age. Get the shot. Wear your mask. Avoid large crowds. Father God, we can do that. And Father God, we come this morning. We just want to praise you. We just want to give you the glory. Thanking you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. You brought us from a mighty long ways. We come now praising you for being the good God that you are. We could have been sleeping in yonder's grave. But Father, you made our death behave. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Can nobody, nobody do me like you, Father. We love you. We praise you. We give you the glory. And we thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus, whom we are excited and expectantly waiting, Father God. Thank you for Jesus. To come into this old sin-filled world. Thank you, Lord. This is your humble servant's prayer. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
the church say amen. amen. We pray that the word of God has touched you in such a way that you will leave here better than you came. And as you go forth, that you go forth in the grace and in the power of the love of God. I want to remind you that on the table in the back, the uh, new devotionals for the next quarter are available on the table in the back. Please stop by and get your devotional and uh, not only get it, but read it. Amen. Amen. Read it every day. It has a good word for you. Something to motivate you and keep you focused and to help your heart avoid the trap. Amen. 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 Again, want to say a word of thanks to all of you for your participation in the Thanksgiving basket giveaway. And uh, we pray that uh, you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, a time with family and friends. Y'all did good because y'all came up in here full and sleepy and <laughs> just wanted to sit down and stuff. Y'all made me plow hard today, but that's all right. That's all right. We'll make up for it down the road. Amen. 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 Now. You know, I, I thought about how, uh, you know, yesterday was a day to watch a lot of football. And I got a belly full of football yesterday. And I'm going to get a belly full a day. But I watched how the stadium's 100,000. Yeah. William Bryce, 80,000. Suppose the church looked like those stadiums. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not against going to the game, but don't let the game be something that you go to and you avoid going to the Lord's house. Amen. 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 Boy, if the church could get like them football stadiums. We can turn this world upside down. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm not going to get on no tangent. Y'all ready to go? Y'all still eating Thanksgiving leftovers? Huh? This, the day is the last day for Thanksgiving leftovers. All right? After that, let it go. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's stand. Let us look to the Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, give you his peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, henceforth and forevermore, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen and amen.